Hi, this is Ron Darling. Uh, this is Skip Lockwood. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Hello and welcome again to another edition of Mets Musings. I know, I know. It's a happy July the 4th edition and the Mets are hotter than a firecracker. And I know the the uh, shows have been a little scattered here and there and I do apologize for that. Just uh, some things that happen, some things that go on in life and uh, but um we're working on it and hopefully maybe i can get a little bit more consistent with the shows it's always been a weekly show and i've slacked off a little bit again i apologize but uh uh keep following the mets and keep following mets musings and i've been following the mets no matter what and team has been red hot had a little hiccup there, uh, lost two to the Astros, but they were also a red hot team coming in, and the Mets took care of them in the opener, and then kind of struggled through the next two games. And part of the reason is the bullpen is faulted, but they've been used a lot with the suspension of Edwin Diaz, which really, really hurt this team. Uh. It, it, it it really hurt the bullpen. The bullpen was starting to come into shape, and then we had Drew Smith go down and Sean Reed Foley go down. Diaz gets suspended. Adovino is not pitching very well. Uh, so it was a whole a bunch of things, and I got to tell you, it, it's a little confusing because David Stern, what a remarkable job he's doing shuffling guys in and out just to try to get fresh arms up here and it has been a monumental task but the team has uh fought and fought and scored they scored the most runs in uh the month of june and now we are in july the third uh just a little bit past the halfway mark one game over 500, I can't argue with that. Um, from where they came, I mean, they were 11 games under 500 and looked like they were out of this thing in June was just uh, a terrific month compared to last year when June was a disaster. This June was a terrific success. So, uh, you know, kudos to... Uh, uh, Mendoza with the job he's doing, and it, it, it's not easy. He's not getting a lot out of uh, the majority of the starters, and he's got to juggle that bullpen, and they're shorthanded now between, as I said, between the injuries and the suspension to Diaz. It's been a tough job, but they've managed to, to hang in there and the, the offense is made up for it. So uh, kudos to that. Uh, Brandon Nimmo has gotten red hot, had a little frightening uh, medical incident, I guess you'd call it. He fainted and got a cut in his head, set out a game and a half, came in last night and and had to come in when, when Bader went out with uh, after hitting the wall. And Nimmo was sensational. Two hits, uh, tied the game, won the game. I mean, he just was, he's just on fire. Lindor cooling off just slightly, but he has been red hot uh, in this stretch of uh, June uh, that they've been playing so well in. Uh, Jose Iglesias, uh, he, he's been terrific. Uh, getting key hits. Uh, even Torrens, when he's in, 
He's been getting some key hits. Alvarez came back from his injury. He was red hot. And, uh, you know, everything seemed to mesh. When they brought in Iglesias and Torrens, um, they just seemed to spark this team. They st- they seemed to give some kind of new attitude. They had the players meeting, and that kind of just set this team off. And they have been going like hotcakes ever since then. And uh, so I, I'll give a big credit to them. J.D. Martinez, he got uh, hot. And uh, it's just been unbelievable in June. Now, it's it, so far, it's carried over the first two days of July. Let's hope it carries over further. Uh, you know, uh, Mark Vientos, how about the job he's doing? He's finally come into his own. Uh, he so, reportedly he had a conversation with uh, Carlos Beltran, and uh, who who told him to think about hitting to right center field and center field rather than trying to pull the ball and then let your natural power take care of the rest. And boy, son of a gun, if it ain't been working, he's been getting base hits, home runs. He has really. He solidified that third base. He's taken that third base job. Now, his defense has been so-so. It's not awful. It's not great. <laughs> it's a, I don't even want to say it's average. It's probably a tick below average. But, you know, that's something he can work on. Wade Boggs was not a good third baseman. He made himself into a good third baseman. And I think Vientos now, he has the confidence that he can hit in this league. Maybe he can, he'll concentrate a little bit more on his defense. But it's adequate. He's done the job, and his bat has made up for whatever deficiencies he may have. Um, it, it, it's just been a nice recurrence to say a, a, a rebirth, if you will, of Phoenix Rose. That 11 games down looked bad. And and now to come back and to be above 500 is really quite an accomplishment. Uh, there is, of course, bad news in this. Drew Smith uh, has a right elbow sprain. He uh, apparently will need uh, Tommy John surgery, so you can count him out for this year he's out the rest of the year that's a big blow uh Stalin Marte has a bone bruise in his right knee he's day-to-day could be back in late August uh Kodai Senga is set to begin a minor league uh, assignment I believe tonight in Brooklyn that will be a big thing to watch to see whether or not he, uh, you know, he's ready to go with that. So if he goes, you know, that'll be a big boom to the uh, the rotation. Sean Reed Foley, he's expected back in the late tail end of July. They thought they might have him back as soon as this weekend in Pittsburgh, but they have decided to push him back until after the All-Star game. So maybe that's a good thing. Um, this way they, they, uh, let him get another week or two of rest and, uh, working himself back into shape for this. And, um, he'll be, uh, raring to go then, and they could probably use a real good fresh arm at that point in time. I don't even want to go through who's going up and down. I mean, uh, Christian Scott is back. He will start tonight against the uh, nationals. Um, Matt Festa has been, uh, DFA would uh, so, uh, to make room for Christian Scott, Jose Budo, was up. Tyler J was sent down. Uh, Jose Budo pitched two fine innings last evening. Maybe he'll stick now for a while with the team as he can go multiple innings. So not much uh, negative to say. I mean, uh, you know, they have been playing 
very good ball coming from behind again with the hits. And it's just been uh, fun to watch for change. So let's hope they keep it up in the month of July and August and September and make a run for the wild card. There's still time uh, to make a run for that wild card slot. And uh, who knows if you get red, red hot, you could even make a run at the division. No, Philly uh, is playing some good ball. Slowed up a little bit, but uh, they got off to a nice start. So Atlanta's, uh, you know, Atlanta's Atlanta. So there's not much you can uh, say about them. They're just a darn good team. But they're having their troubles this year as well. So, uh, you know, um, the Mets are currently 13 games back. Four back of Atlanta. That's doable. That's very doable. So, and they still have a lot of games left with the Phillies. So you never know. You you may be able to make up some ground. Time gets short. Is a half a season left? One game short of a half a game season, but uh, one or two games. But it can be done. All right. Let's take a quick break right here and come back after this. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. And we're back. And some quick news, you know, uh, of course, uh, Willie Mays passed away. And earlier this year, Jerry Grody passed away. Both New York legends that have uh, gone in, uh, this year. And the Mets announced Saturday that they have added memorial uniform patches. I'm sure you've already seen them on the uniforms for their numbers, 15 and 24, respectively honoring the lives of the two legends. Their patches made their debut debut prior to Saturday's game against the Astros. Uh, and uh, let's see. Willie Mays' son said, putting the patch on the uniform is another clear indication by the Mets that they appreciated and valued the contributions my dad made to the organization, for that matter, New York City. For my father, coming back to the Mets was coming back to where it all started. He was coming home. So uh, Mets are honoring Willie Mays and Jerry Grody, another great uh, player for them in the 60s. And uh, that's a a cool thing to do and uh, really happy that they decided to honor those guys. they also wearing a three for Buddy Harrelson on the uniform. So we've lost some some uh, big key players in Mets history this year. Um, and it's kind of sad in a way. I got to see all of them play and uh, makes you think about everything. Um, another loss to the world of baseball, Orlando Cepeda. The first baseman for the uh, Giants for many years. A Hall of Famer. Died at the age of 86. He was nicknamed the uh, Baby Bull. He was an 11-time All-Star. Played 17 seasons for six MLB teams. He won the 1958 NL Rookie of the Year Award with the Giants. Uh, He played there nine seasons and the NL MVP with the Cardinals in 1967 when he hit a career-high 
325 with 25 home runs and 111 RBIs. Uh, Orlando Cepeda passes away at the age of 86. All right, one quick note. Uh, we're not going to do a, an official down on the farm, but let's take a look. They are in the, uh, the the minor leagues have started already their second half campaign. So uh, Syracuse finished the first half 46 and 28. Binghamton finished the first half 35 and 32. Brooklyn was at 33 and 33. St. Lucie at 22 and 44. Currently in the second half, Syracuse is four and four. Binghamton is two and five. Brooklyn is three and eight, and St. Lucie is four and seven. And that is the uh, minor league report for this week. Uh, some key players, uh, Acuna is red hot down there. There have been some speculation, some talk that perhaps he should be called up with the struggles of Jeff McNeil. And, uh, you know, to back up, uh, to play second base, I should say, uh, McNeil could move to an outfield slot with Marte out permanently, and Iglesias could go back to being the swing man. That's all a possibility, but no word. My guess is they would wait till at least, at least the all-star break and reevaluate. Now, with the current play of the Mets, uh, what does that do to the trade deadline? Well, it makes David Stern's job very, very interesting. He's got this early part of the month to decide which direction the Mets really want to go. And it's up to the team how they play. Uh, got a voicemail from uh, uh, our good friend Sean across the pond over in England. And uh, that's the question that he asked. Uh, mainly, what do I think the Mets may do in the uh, the um, the trade deadline? And uh, I guess they're going to be there may be a little bit of buying and selling. I, I think they're going to be seeing who they could move if they're confident in their young pitching. If Christian Scott looks really good, they could consider moving a Manier maybe even a Severino, though I'd love to see him extend Severino. I think he's done a sensational job for the Mets, and I'd like to keep him here. But they could consider moving him and then go after him, you know, uh, after the season as a free agent. So that's a possibility there. Uh, definitely need bullpen arms. Uh, try to find somebody that they can pick up from a non-contender that maybe could use... Um, Somebody, you know, uh, uh, maybe they may have to depart with one of their prospects to get a bullpen arm in here. Depends upon what position. And should they revert back to last year's team and and have a bad July and be ten another, you know, drop down, which I don't see happening. But if it were to happen then they would probably, we, we would see a big sell-off again with some of the young guys really ready to come. Uh, if not, then we uh, we may see uh, uh, them trying to do both, trying to, to improve the bullpen and maybe get some prospects back to do you know to look to the future so it's all do to work out when it works out and it's all going to depend on the rest of this month what they do okay um we're going to make this a short one this week so i hope you enjoyed the show and i hope you'll tuned in and i'm going to try to be more uh, weekly with the show, depending upon how things work out. And uh, I hope that you will uh, hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, we are available. The audio version is available on all of your major podcast apps. So go check us out. 
and uh, it's good to hit subscribe so you always know when a new episode of Mets Musings will be released. Uh, and with that being said, let's wrap it up. And I'm going to say, remember until the next time to keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go, Mets. I'm Gary Mack. I'll see you next time on another edition of Mets Musings. <laughs>